Oh, hi. Hey. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. I've been such a... Such a super fan of, of yours, Mr. and Mrs. Acting. And, um... God, what to say? I'm such a fan. I, I think um, I first met you when I met Olivier. And some of that scenery chewing Shakespeare was just, it spoke. I mean, it was, it was brilliant. It was like writing. It was very visible what was being done. And so in a way it's a, it's a different era but it was writing. There was a writing to it. It wasn't just the text. It was the text through Larry. And then Hopkins. I mean, I can't stop thinking about the father. And it's so nice to meet you. And I guess my big question is, where did you go? And who did you become? Because... I think you changed. I'm not so sure I did. I'm sure I did in some in some way. My relationship to you is so different. It's not always. Sometimes I'm reminded in these little moments that you and I still know each other. But man, The business you created, and I think I can say that you created you, in a sense, but the business that surrounds you has changed so dramatically. I don't get to talk to other human beings anymore. I have to put myself on tape and spit it out there and hear nothing in return. <laughs> And I used, to, I used to go to a party every day, a little party with three people, a casting director, a director, and myself. And it was a little party. And we'd have a party. It was incredible. And sometimes the party went really well. And I got to feed off people in a room. And now I'm self-taping, which means self-taping. That's a horrible idea. I mean, what... How'd you come up with that? Because it was a very bad idea. And yet you still exist, right? You know, we see, we see the father, we see Anthony working. It's all the same. The honor is still there, the, 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 the beauty, the power, the instinct, the unexpected, the inspiration, the, 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 the hook. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. Ooh. That's all still the same. But what if you've changed so much by how much the process has changed? What if you've died? What if you don't exist? What if you're not really real anymore? I mean, I miss people. I miss community. So many of us do with COVID and everything. But, but you changed five years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, my first audition, my first self-tape, not my first, uh, maybe my first, was Boardwalk Empire, 2011, 10 years ago. And I got it. And it was a strange process. And I, 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 I recorded the off-camera lines. I was in a, ho a motel in Vermont, maybe. And I was on my way to my sister in Montreal, not really through via Montreal. I was on my way from a wedding. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but I got an audition. I had to self tape in a hotel motel in the middle of nowhere. And the wallpaper in the hotel room worked for Boardwalk Empire. It was that old. It was twenties wallpaper. And I read it as if I had a reader, didn't have a reader, recorded the off-camera lines, cut them in with Final Cut, sent off a tape, a fictional audition, an audition that never happened that was kind of like an audition. Actor, 
reading, responding to ghosts that were in the room, and then putting those ghosts into text, into, into, into off-camera lines, verbal, it was me, but I even put, <laughs> I even put an accent on the off-camera lines as if I had a, and it was a Southern accent. It was so stupid. Why did I do that? But I wanted the person watching the tape to think that I had a friend <laughs> in the middle of Vermont. And that, <laughs> that portable friend who was like in the rental car, just happened to be there in the trunk, uh, was uh, from the South. Well, because most imaginary friends in Vermont are in the trunk and they're from the South. I don't, maybe you didn't know that. So I, you know, knocked on the trunk and imaginary friend came out, happened to be a male, happened to sound a lot like me, which is weird, except for the accent. So I put an accent on the off-camera lines and I cut them in and God bless Boardwalk Empire, I got the job. That was my first. That was 2011, let's say, something like that. It's been a strange decade since then. Because if that's all we're doing, if I don't get to feed off the other energy, what if I'm really good at that? What if I'm really good at feeding off other energy? A casting director, a reader, a director's notes. If that's gone, what do we have? Did acting die? I wonder. Imagine being a kid. Imagine being a kid these days. You get so inspired. You go to acting school. You get to learn from your heroes. Watch your heroes. There's such good work out there. It's out there. It's real. And then you go out into the real world and you stop talking to people. So you're, you're at, you know, Juilliard, Yale, NYU. And you're around these amazing other people and they're feeding you and you're able to you take from them, you're just listening. You're not even acting, you know, that whole thing. So what if you're 25, 20? What if you're young and your experience with a business is, okay, great, uh, thanks for getting educated in acting terms. Thanks for going to one of these wonderful universities. Um, take your Juilliard degree and shove it up your butt. And now, get get close to that. Get get ready to press your own. Get ready to you know, press the press the camera yourself. Record, and then start working. And then you're gonna edit. Did you want to be an editor? Oh oh, too bad. Uh, go fuck yourself. You're an editor now. You're a filmmaker. You're making little movies with yourself. That's what you're gonna do. That's, that's the rest of your life. Imagine these actors who don't even make it that far, who don't even get to do the beautiful interplay thing that happens collectively with two, three other actors in the scene, and it's crazy and powerful and much bigger than you are. You don't get to do that, ever. Because you get to put yourself on camera 150 times before you fucking give up. What's that like? I know what acting is. I've been doing it for 30 years. I miss it. I don't have it. I mean, I just, Eyes of Tammy Faye came out. It's so wonderful and so great to be part of that collective. So beautiful. What if I screwed up that audition? I wouldn't have even been able to go into the casting office <laughs> to screw up that audition around some like-minded people. I got that job. That's great. I can't. I can't get feedback. I can't get direction. I can't get someone to say, you're just so obviously good. Just do it again. But this character never begs. Oh, okay. No, 
never begs. That's good. Thank you for that direction. Thank you so much. That means everything to me. I got it. All right, let's go. You don't need to say anything else. You killed it for me. Thank you. It's an interpretive art. I need interpretation. I don't get that. So what's next? It's nice to meet you, Mr. and Mrs. Acting. But you changed. What the fuck? Is there a future? What's going to happen? Like, what, what does happen for the 24-year-olds who fail for six years? They probably get the fuck out because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you get out of this impersonal business? You know, and then uh, my heart goes out to Alec Baldwin and the, the Rust thing and uh, for, <laughs> it's dangerous also. <laughs> so acting sucks. You don't get to commune with these amazing spirits, these souls, these people who give you their hearts and you just listen and ping off that and it's amazing. You don't get to do that. And it's dangerous and someone is going to die. I wonder. I don't know. I don't know what the future looks like in 10 years. Who do we lose because they just can't deal with the bullshit? Right? They're getting, you know, sometimes they get a call back. Sometimes there's a Zoom call. Sometimes, you know, maybe you get a note. Oh my God. But there's no casting directors and they're just going off numbers. I wonder sometimes if the casting directors are watching all the tapes. I know they're not. Some are, some are so amazing and so talented, but, but what if they've outsourced their jobs to us? It doesn't, it doesn't work for anybody. We have to go back in the room, but we're, we may not. I mean, look, I'm, I'm the first to be humble in the face of COVID. Old people have a right to, old people have a right to live. We have to protect the vulnerable. I'm good with that. So maybe I'm just upset. Maybe you haven't changed Mr. and Mrs. Acting, but you totally have because it happened before COVID's watch. So a part of me thinks that we're going to lose a lot of Hopkinses. We're going to lose a lot of talented people to the discussion discouraging, impersonal nature of the business. And at the very least, the 80s sucked. <laughs> but at the very least, when something was cooking, it wasn't impersonal. LA was a garbage city in the 80s. It's wonderful now. It's kind of an amazing city now. In the 80s, it was a garbage city. And it was a bunch of people trying to sell you, it was snake oil. It was just a bunch of snake oil. And then a lot of great people moved here, partly from the East Coast, partly from the West Coast. It just became this wonderful place with a lot of sort of integrity, integrity, sort of honesty, appreciation for the art. It was beautiful. It's an amazing place. But if at the same time, there's no community, you're no longer an art, Artist, you're sort of a, you know, you're a, you're a, you're a blogger, vlogger, you're a YouTube personality, even when you're an actor, even when you're going off somebody else's lines, even when you're trying to create a little film that will get you a job. You're just, you're just a vlogger. You're just a autodidact, is that the right term? You're just in your own little space. <sighs> And I don't know if it's sustainable. I wonder if acting quality, I mean, it's, it's still so good, right? And maybe casting directors still know who to go to and they've discovered the right people, maybe. But I feel like 
as community dies, this is the art form that dies. Maybe being in an orchestra is worse. Maybe. But it's certainly similar. There's some parody. I mean, it's got to be, you know, imagine, imagine everybody in the orchestra playing on their, on their own and then sending the MP3 to the conductor. That's what it feels like. That's what it's like these days. And if acting doesn't go through an enormous shift and trauma, which is again, great to meet you, Mrs. and Mr. Acting. If you don't go through a, a huge upheaval, I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, I don't, I, I, I can't, people still have an inspiration, that's great. People still have a sense of the art, that's great. But if it's not connected to the love of community, I don't even know if it's real. Am I good? Yeah. Am I good in a group? Yeah. Do I love people? Yeah. Am I good on my own? Yeah. Sometimes on set, I put, I put camera tape on the map box. I've, I have acted off camera tape plenty of times. I can do it. And that's what I'm doing every day with these auditions. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is What's next? And is there any way, Mr. and Mrs. Acting, as I meet you here today, fictionally, and I so honor you, is there any way that there can be some thaw of the isolation? If there's any way, maybe we do, maybe we, maybe we have to get brave with COVID and Omicron and maybe we just need to start being together, even with masks. Oh my God, if I could just hear another actor say one of these lines, I could respond. Right now I'm in Vermont and I'm cutting myself in with a Southern accent. <laughs> Like an idiot. So it's a pleasure to meet you. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe you're who inspired Larry Olivier and Anthony Hopkins and Meryl Streep. And I'm proud of you for doing that. I just hope you can keep alive. Because what if you just died? What if the art form just goes and it becomes a series of snake oil salesmen like it was in LA in the 80s? That would suck. Authenticity, integrity, all that that we've created in the field of acting, I want that to keep going. So I'm hoping that as you meet me and maybe listen to me, Maybe there's some way that we can save you, save acting collectively. I beg you. But great to meet you either way. I'm a fan. <laughs>